<laughs> I'm so glad you came prepared for the role. <laughs> I was going to put the whole full garb on, but I'm like, listen, <laughs> it's a radio show, Jill. It's a radio show. It's a radio show. <laughs> and just as having audio issues, which is the one thing you don't want to have <laughs> when oh, you're no. recording a radio show. Oh, no. Am I back? Now you're oh, back. You yeah. It's the dock. I just can't use the dock anymore. I need to buy a new dock. Okay. Uh I can't <laughs> Hi, Jill. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you. I Crazy was honored Jill. that you called, that you reached out to me. You no, know, um. Thank you. I, I, it's a bigger I, deal than you know, Jill, because Justin has made a career of not having the same person on more than one time. So when he makes that exception, it's a really big deal. Oh, boy. I, I really don't like to have the same person on or the same organization on but you've done a lot there's two reasons first off you you've really you've turned up the volume um or stepped on the gas or both uh and you're you're working really hard on this and so i i i want to i mean you've you've grown it and you're continuing to grow which i think is fantastic and your experience is is becoming it looks like much better and, and a, a deeper experience but i also wanted to use this as an opportunity for you to reach out over the radio and maybe spread the word of your if you're still looking for a permanent home if you're I still am. on that search i think this would be a good because a lot of people that have maybe property <laughs> that are sitting around um right. if you're listening to the show you know that might get that word out to that audience right. so right. Um, I, I, I wanted to, to do that because you need you need a home we want to get <laughs> you a home i'm desperate i'm determined to find help find you a home so <laughs> We do, we do, we need a home. <laughs> yes, yes. So and you I know, not only that. for me, right? I, I, I've talked to you about this. I mean, we a, a place where we can have other um, outside events, right? We're kind of lacking that in this area, right? Um, so yeah, I, I have a, a a person I spoke to about doing the Highland Games. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, this could be. But you need a place. You need a home. You yes. need a home. You can't just yes. keep dropping in once a year, <laughs> you know, and, and borrowing. And I, I know they're good partners up there to be to to do that. But you you they need are. the they you are. need the trees and you need the you know you need the walls and the fort looking thing. Like you need that that what is it the the Maryland one is you know they're in a a wooded setting where you feel you're kind of transported into this they're not out in a field with a chain link fence around it like you need right you know that's right. where that's i'm not going to say that on the radio but that's where you know yeah. it's well people aren't coming going oh i watched the truck pulls right over there yeah, right. <laughs> right right so it's sure. you know a, a lot of what you're doing with a with a renaissance type festival is transporting people into an experience and it's easier to do that when you have that that setting that permanent the whole setting, setting. Where you're doing yeah it. so yeah. i know that's a thing and we i really really want to help if we can somehow I appreciate that. that. that need yeah, I there. think too people maybe, and I think, you know, the more this is evolving and the more I, I think about it, I think too, I, I kind of, uh, and this is something I'm definitely going to work on, probably a PowerPoint I need to do, like a presentation, but I think people kind of need to understand too, this isn't, um, so so what, what when you say Raven, uh, when you say a, a Renaissance or a medieval fair to people, like what, what do they envision? Let's say if they've never been right. So um, it might scare people too. like, you know, I was kind of thinking this when I'm looking for land or I'm looking for property, <laughs> we, we don't want, you know, sky rises. We're not looking for big bulky buildings and right. right. So, you know, think the Bavarian Inn, right? Like that chalet kind of looking, you know, Downtown Winchester, there's a couple of buildings there right on, um, was that, I think it's on, on Boscowan. I was looking the other day, I was, I was at the Broken Window having a beer. Oh, yeah. That, that structure over there, it's, it's kind of like, so, and so it's that, that, that German. It's a very German, European. Right? 
village. Yeah, just Boscowan. It's that weird little spot on Bos- Boscowan across. Yeah. From, you know what I'm talking about. The yeah. your coffee shop used to be on the corner there. Yes, there you go. I know. I had uh, lunch there earlier or last Friday, and it was. It's still weird to me walking into El Centro to order enchiladas when that was where I lived for my coffee. <laughs> I know. I know. But, so yeah, I guess like that's kind of like my goal too to kind of get people maybe to if they can kind of wrap their minds around what exactly it would look like, you know, not something that's going to stick out like a sore thumb, um, right. you know, kind of bring, and I mean, isn't Winchester, didn't the Ger- the German. It was. People, right. Wasn't this. It was, a big area? Winchester, when George Washington got here at age 16, when he first came up here to survey for Lord Fairfax, Winchester was a primarily German speaking town. Right. So that was that was the primary language here was German, um, and he was this this stuffy Protestant. Um, he didn't get along with everybody. He, they they were all drinking. Woo! And he was like, right? drinking is bad. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't yeah. fit in too well in the beginning. He learned. He learned. Oh my right. He came around eventually. He came around. Yeah, and got so everybody. Really, I think I think I w- you know I kind of need to tie that in to get people to understand like. You know, tying in the 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 history a little bit and the roots of this area, we got of, it. I'm kind we got of it here to, already. Yeah, right. Like, so, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's celebrate it. You know, let's let's bring that to the forefront. And, and I want to mention if you're, I mean, if this is still part of that plan, like we had talked with with Patrick a, a little while back, of you want to do year round programming, not just the once a year festival, but you want to. <laughs> outdoor type experiences archery whatever it is for these kids these teenagers young teenagers that don't have anything else to do they they don't play traditional sports they're not football players or whatever but they want to do outdoor experiences so this gets them you know i i think that's an an awesome venture and i think there's a lot of demand i think there would be a lot of demand for it we just need a place for it that's what needs a home Right. And I've spoken to a few people, you know, the esports thing is starting mm-hmm. to kind of build up. And I've had some great conversations with these guys because they're kind of like in that same, even though they're video gaming and that sort of thing, they're still trying to target that age group as right. well. Right. Joey, you is it Joey that, that you talked to? Joey G. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's and on then my there's board. a gentleman <laughs> over here that um actually he just moved and he, he's now with uh, Joey. He was um, in the Exxon station over here. Yes, yes. Over on 50 West or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was actually able to get the Frederick County school bus system to bring the kids, like an activities bus or whatever. And and that got me so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, if I can get that, to drop the kids off that want to do those programs there. Yeah, there's just... You know, my my brain starts going in 50 million directions. I'm like, oh, my gosh, these are all things. And I'm trying to kind of pull right. this all together, right, to kind of make it happen. Right. Yeah. So we need to – anyways. So yeah. you see why I wanted to have her on? So I want to be able to talk – Sorry. To I know. I just got to go like – so, so it's not just – it's not just the Ravenwood. It's not just the festival. Right. It's, it's also – this so if we could talk about yeah. both if we could weave both of those in there well and i'm thinking we can spend the first segment talking about the festival and what it is where it is how the history of it all of that sort of thing and then come back in the second segment and say so we talked about the festival but jill you would really like to have your own place for this and then we can talk about finding a home and the things that you could do and the possibilities and the opportunities that are available through that in the second segment if that works Okay. That sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. And then, Justin, do you have anything at the end? Other than just go look at the website. There's a ton of crap going on. <laughs> go look at the website. There's a ton of crap going on. I mean, it's, it's October. So, I mean, every five minutes, there's something going on. So, it's, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can't find something to do, you don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, let's record the first 10 minutes. We'll f- see how far we get and we'll regroup at the break. Does that work? Perfect. Right. Let's do it. 
Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition. That means I am chatting today with Justin Kearns. He's my Winchester tourism yeah. dude. And we're on the Zoom. So disappointed in you, Justin. I, 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 <laughs> You say that now, but you're you're going to be excited because this is this is a fun guest, and we've yes, I know we're repeating, and we almost never repeat um, because there's so many new things that are happening all the time in businesses and all of that. But this is just is a, a cool event, and then uh, also we'll get in. I think in the second part of the segment. So hang around if you're listening to this, hang around to the second segment. There's some cool future opportunity with this organization, um, with some like young teen and, and middle teen things to, to get them out and doing archery and, and outdoor stuff. So, so we're talking about an event, but we're also talking about later on, we're going to talk about some really cool potential opportunity for uh, um, really cool stuff for our teens to do in the area. So, so we'll get to that, but we'll start out. I'll let you. I'll let you jump in. I was going to say, introduce your return visitor. <laughs> oh, well, this is Jill. <laughs> oh, hi, um, Jill. Jill Edlick, She's with um, the Ravenwood. What's your What's the foundation? Uh, Ravenwood Foundation. The Ravenwood Foundation, um, and then the Ravenwood Fair. So the Renaissance type fair, the Renaissance fair that we have here. That it's in its third, third or fourth year. Fourth year, year number four. Our fourth, yeah. Year number four, and we were right here with year number one, so we're kind of looping back around. Um, I know, and it's growing, it's growing, and you, I've just been seeing all this stuff, all the announcements, and it's just, it is so robust now. Like, the first year was kind of like, okay, what can I string together and, and be able to call this a Renaissance Festival? And now it's this very robust thing, so that's, it's so exciting, so excited to have you doing this in our community and bringing this to um, our community. So we want to be able to talk about all the really cool things and the experiences. And maybe if somebody's never been to a Renaissance Festival, so they're not scared <laughs> and like intimidated, like what is this thing? If I don't go in like full garb, am I going to be looked at weird? You know, like how do I go to one of these things? So this is kind of your dummy's guide to a Renaissance Festival. <laughs> um, if we want to put it that way. So right. anyways, yeah, yeah. Welcome so, on. Jill, we let's start on. with the so, date and the location. Get, tell everybody when and where it is. Okay, so it's September 30th. It's a Friday to October 2nd, which is a Sunday. It's at the Frederick County Fairgrounds on the Fairground Road, which is also uh, Route 11 uh, in Clearbrook. Uh, Friday, it's going to be from uh, 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Saturday is 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Sunday is 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I want to go back to something Justin said a second ago. For people that are listening and they either have a misconception, because I know there are a lot of misconceptions mm. about these types of Renaissance festivals out there. Explain how it works, what it's like. Do I have to come in some sort of garb that makes me fit in? <laughs> kind of educate us on what to expect. Sure, sure. Well, so uh, Renaissance, medieval fair. Uh, so it's a little bit of, of both, right? So we have uh, quite a, a time span. Uh, so there are all the different outfits and things that you can wear. You can go back to 700, all the way up to 1700, 1800, whatever, whatever you choose. Uh, it, it, it does scare people sometimes about the, the dress, and I get it. Uh, it's not for everyone. Uh, but um, actually, this year, we have a rental garb place. Yeah, do really? we, we do. We do. Nice. We figured, you know, if, if if people aren't quite sure, right, but they kind of want to somewhat get into it. or So we, we decided this year we're going to do a rental. Uh, and actually, uh, the young lady that is doing the rental also has a, a regular um, vending spot at the fair. She's uh, Oaks and Linen is, is her um, her company. And she's actually doing the rental and donating the proceeds from the rental to the foundation. Wow. wow. Yeah. So we're super, super psyched over it um, and just love the idea of people uh, you know, being able to rent, you know, wear the costume, kind of feel like you're in in the groove of it all, right? Uh, but maybe not ready yet to do that, you know, leap into the full, you know, 
outfit. to be a part of the show. They want to come and look right. the part, but they're not ready to get on stage yet necessarily. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. But you don't have to get dressed up if you don't want to. Um, you do not. You do not. I, I go no. to plenty of these and there are people just walking around in their cargo shorts and, and a t-shirt. You know, like. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, people people watching is like the, the best part of it, right? I mean. It really yeah. is. It, yeah. It, it's pretty fun. For sure. Um, for sure. Yeah. So you walk me through, walk me through yeah. some of the activities and the things that people can experience when they come. Okay, so this year we have, um, so we, we've been kind of building on this idea of in, uh, certain areas that are like encampments. Uh, so this year we have a medieval encampment that will be set up, uh, again, with the whole educational aspect of it, because I'm, I'm big on really uh, getting people to understand, uh, you know, that time period and, you know, things that they did back then and how it kind of has, you know, brought us to where we are, you know, today. Uh, we have a Viking encampment. Uh, and, and all of these encampments will be doing things, you know, relative to their, their time periods. So there will be um, cooking demonstrations, uh, archery demonstrations, um, jewelry making. Uh, the Viking uh, encampment especially will be doing jewelry making, shields. Uh, showing how to defend with shields as well and how they did that. Uh, then we have um, uh, another uh, area, which is called the Raven's Roost, which is a little bit of a mixture of all different types. Uh, we have some fairy in there. So, you know, the it, it kind of, it's, it's a broad, broad <laughs> group of people. Uh, that just kind of come all together and give that experience to everybody and educate and and just show everybody, you know, that that time and and what it's all about. The thing that I love about these types of events is that you can be a die hard, you know, every single line from Lord of the Rings kind of person to somebody who knows the Lord of the Rings exists. And I kind of understand what the story is, but I'm really interested in seeing it in real life because that's what it reflects. So it doesn't matter what your level of interest is. You can still come and have a good time and learn something. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, glass blowing. That was another thing. Um, you know, uh, uh, blacksmiths we have as well this year. Nice. Uh, the archery uh, people, they, they actually have a place where you can do archery yourself so you can do it. And then uh, right next to their, um, their spot, they're actually going to be showing people how they make them and put them together and everything. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of lot of things to see. Pl plan on spending the day. This is definitely not one of those like you know, go in, do a few things, and and jump out. There's there's really a, a lot of stuff to do and see. And you yeah, have three whole days to do it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Three yeah. days. I mean, yeah. Jill. Wow, three days. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot. That's awesome. We love, love, love seeing that. So congratulations on being able to build it out to that. Um, well, my kids, so I've got a 10-year-old and a six and a half year old. And so they we've been going for a couple of years now. So, you know, they've been the age is following them. They they like it every year, but it's the experience, the experiences that are there, like the different experiences that you're not gonna get anywhere else. And you can right. go and do things, it's hands-on stuff that they can do hands-on experiences that they will build these memories instead of joy just going and looking at something and watching somebody else do something like they can go they they we found out that my daughter's a really good archer like she she got into archery because she went and we paid the whatever two dollars and fifty cents or whatever what is very affordable like it's a couple bucks and then she got to shoot some arrows at a pumpkin and she was just right up just pulled up and went boom and right on into the pumpkin <laughs> you're like Hey, I like this. I'm good at this. So she's got her own bow and arrow now and goes out in the backyard. But that really kind of fueled that. So, That's you great. know, these, these little things and where normally, where else is she going to, you know, be yeah. able to just. You don't get that hands on experience at a museum. Right. And it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't stick with you. Like it would have been one thing, Justin, for her to be able to watch somebody do it or see pictures of how it looked back in the day. 
she probably would have been, oh, and that's kind of nice. But the fact that she got to try it and, and now it's ingrained. Right. Yes. Right. It, it it just makes it a much more fulfilling experience. There are a lot of things aimed at kids at this. A lot of things aimed at kids. So, I, you know, they're happy. They're super happy. The kids absolutely, absolutely love it. There's so oh, many kids God. running around there, too. So, awesome. yeah. <laughs> right at home. Super family-friendly event. Yeah. Well, and leading into, so the kids, so we have the Grail Quest again this year. We found okay. that last year when we did that, boy, was that something else, uh, that it, something so so simple and easy, uh, but great, like interactive and really has the, have, you know, the families and the kids wanting to make sure they get all those stamps, you know, from all the vendors and uh, some of the vendors were giving out candy as well. And then being able to present that to the king, and then you get a scroll. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. He's all ready. The king has been uh, stamping his his scrolls and uh, <laughs> getting prepared and ready for that. And they get uh, they get a cute um, like a necklace with a, a crown on it, uh, and that's like one of the things they get to to do, uh, you know, during the fair, which is which is awesome. It's a lot of fun. So let's talk about that for a second. There is a king and there is a queen. I'm assuming, and maybe wrongly, that as the founder of this event, you get to be the queen? So that I get that. I get asked that a lot. So uh, I mean, you are wearing a crown. I, I am. Zoom. I am. This is this is the I know, right? Imagine, <laughs> imagine this. So I actually am the baroness. So and and people, you know, kind of ask me about that and so for one I you'd never think it but I'm not good being the center <laughs> oh if you need a queen I am in <laughs> <laughs> so so being that face um having to be there all the time or having to be on and you know interacting with everyone that's wonderful but we needed someone that could do that while I'm dealing with the phone call that I'm getting. Hey, Jill, the ticket, the ticket booth isn't working. Can you please <laughs> come and help us fix the machine? You know, that sort of thing. So there's so much in the background that's going on. It's it's okay that I'm the Baroness. <laughs> so that's kind of like, you know exit stage left of the, as they say uh and do what needs to be done behind the scenes and then have two two people you know the king and the queen and then the whole court we've got a princess and a prince this year as well uh they need to be the face and what people and the children like to you know interact with and do pictures and that sort of thing and be the face of, of ravenwood for me well, I know that there are a ton of other activities. We haven't even gotten to the food, which is why the adults come, because That's the giant turkey like legs are quite the <laughs> hit. The so yeah. let's take a break. When we come back, give me all the rest of the details for Ravenwood Fair. We'll talk a little bit about the food. And then I want to talk some, like Justin mentioned, about your future home that you are in search of, your future permanent place to be able yeah. to not just hold this event, but to have other events throughout the year. So can we do all of that? in the next segment yes do it we are on the screen today chatting with justin kearns from winchester frederick county convention and visitors bureau it's tourism tuesday winchester frederick county edition obviously joe edlick is with us she is with ravenwood foundation they every year put on the ravenwood fair if you want more details about that during the break ravenwood fair f-a-i-r-e dot u-s is her website. The event is happening September 30th through October 2nd. So you can go check it out and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Ta-da! There you go. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a whole other studio? Do you have do you do this on the computer at home or is this all on your phone still? Oh who's that? You no, do my... can't it. no. Oh yeah, it's on my computer. It's on the you laptop. The thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't trust my phone. I don't, I don't trust it to save audio. I don't trust it to do all of the things. So I have it on the computer because it saves the, when zoom is done, it downloads it to two places. It downloads it to zoom on the web in the cloud, and then it downloads it to my hard drive so that okay. I don't have a concern of finishing. And then the audio is gone. And right. now what the hell do I do? <laughs> right. right. Oh, I did. 
did do this and I look. I know. Oh, and I'm thinking one? so far, we've been the fairly. One. My mug. Yeah. Okay, good. I need to get my mug this year. Okay. We've been fairly politically correct. I don't think I've cursed too much and we haven't said anything derogatory, which usually is also me doing that in the right. beginning. <laughs> so I'm thinking we can save the, I can, cause usually I don't use the video. So Jill, what normally happens is I pull the audio at the end, I edit it down and that's what ends up on the radio. If we run long and I can't get all of it on the radio, then all of it goes into the podcast that oh, people cool. can listen. And I haven't done a really good job of trying to keep myself a little more professional and be able to use the YouTube for the video part of the Zoom, because I don't know how to do any video editing. So this would be a, a case of from beginning to end, this is what has to go on YouTube because I don't know how to take anything out. And I always mess it up. I always go off on a rant about a politician or go off on a rant about another event. <laughs> so far, I've managed to keep that in check. So yeah, if I can do that good. throughout the rest of the segment, we'll put this up on YouTube, which will broaden your audience for somebody maybe oh, to fun. help you find a new home. Oh, I would go. love it. I would love it. Yeah, I have to venture into YouTube. I, I'm just finally now doing TikToks. <laughs> yes, TikToks. We're fine. getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> so we'll come back. And so I know we want to talk about the food. What other activities do you want to make sure we touch like, on? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I was, okay. So we I said archery. And we have the axe throwing, uh, the grail quest. Um, we talked about the children. The kids' area. Is there uh, music? Friday night we're doing, yeah, Friday night we're doing like that concert from seven to ten. Did uh, you have this drum? The the was it the drummers or the? Did you post that or did I see that somewhere else? Maybe I saw that somewhere else. What's that? Like Celtic drummers or something? Or no? No. Like uh, well, we do. I mean, we have a lot of Celtic singing. Um, you know, bands and stuff like that. I thought there was a like three drummers that I thought that you posted that. Maybe oh, could you, you're talking about could Yes. That is my, <laughs> let me tell you that. <laughs> so they are like known, you know, in the, the, the Ren Faire circuit. And every year I've been trying, I've been trying. And this year I got them and I am like, over the moon they were amazing i watched a, a youtube video of did them did you i mean amazing yeah i am so excited could i do. am so okay. excited all right yeah could do yeah it's a funny spelling it's like celtic it's c u d u b h <laughs> so i looked it up i'm like i have to figure out how to say this so i don't sound stupid <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna butcher that. <laughs> but oh my gosh, Janet! If you watch these, they're they're amazing. If you they go on YouTube, unbelievably it's I'll find them and put the link in the show notes page so that somebody they, might, can they the make the everybody show. stop and look at them. They're not yes. one of those things that are playing in the background. When they start, everybody stops and just sucks into them because they <laughs> are they are commanding. They're yeah, incredibly they're, creative. Yes, uh, yeah. really cool. Really, really, yeah. really cool. All right, so we want to make sure we talk about the food. We want to talk about yeah. the music. Obviously, yeah. I want to ask about tickets, how people get tickets for one jousting, day, for jousting. all three days. Are you doing the joust? Everybody loves the joust. Oh, joust, yeah, absolutely. Joust, oh, joust. Okay. oh, yeah, and full armor combat. So there is a, what we call, uh, it's called a list. So where we had the jousting is right. now going to be this big wooden list which is like essentially like an arena kind of thing. Okay. And full armor, like this, it is it is becoming a thing across the US. Yeah, yeah. Uh I I, I mean they are seriously hitting each other <laughs> with halberds and axes. And every time everybody's going, oh, ow, like you could just feel it. Um, full, full contact. Yeah, that is okay. Awesome. That'll get all the guys that are listening. To right. want to four, get to yeah, I know, right? Four different teams um, so far uh, that are going to be attending. Um, the one, the the local, uh, somewhat local group is Iron Lions is is their name, and they've helped us to kind of put this together. And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> thing. So full armor, full armor full combat, armor yeah, combat, music. Um, food, turkey legs, 
turkey legs. And then Chester tickets. Brewworks is always yeah. there. I'm assuming Holly and Bonnie will be there because I don't think you could keep them away. I don't think you could tell them not to show up. And right. I know, right? <laughs> I still have my Get Thee to a Brewery shirt that I wear around. Um, oh, for, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But I, I love that you use a lot of local, you know, you support is, is a, a lot of local folks, so. That is my goal. That is my goal. I love that you Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Oh, Maddie's I, ice cream this year. He, well, Maddie's he's, will be there. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. They have a huge following. Good food. Sexy Mexi. Oh, nice. Yeah, people yeah. People that I've been trying to get every year are Fine now food. finally, yeah, but, you know, they just need, I guess they need it to takes, see what it's all about, yeah. right? Too. Well, yeah. it takes mm -hmm. a couple of years for them to understand and realize what you're doing. And it also, in a lot of cases, they're busy and booked. So it takes a couple of years for them to find that opening that and schedule, work yeah. you into their regular schedule. Right. Exactly. You have to get established. It's yeah. so hard to That's establish it. as a new event. Yeah. But okay, once you're, so when, you're in your fourth year, you're you're rolling now. So That's we'll come a, back I, and I we'll talk food, food, music, jousting, full contact, armor, sports, tickets, and then home. Where permanent home. Does that work? And and yes. other programming for teams. Yes. Right. Year uh, round foundation work, other than uh, just the other than just the fair. Yes. Uh, Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition. So of course, Justin Kearns is chatting with me today. We are on the Zoom. It would have been really cool during the break. We were talking about all of the fun activities. We should have gotten a personal little setup or something so that we could have watched in person some of the things that are going to happen at the Ravenwood Fair. It's happening September 30th through October 2nd. It is hosted by Ravenwood Foundation. And Jill, we didn't even get into some of the things that Ravenwood Foundation does, but we're running out of time because there's so many things to talk about at the Ravenwood Fair. Start with the food because that is a really big deal. It's some of the stuff that people expect at a festival, but some of the stuff is period-like or yeah, whatever the word is. <laughs> but not just a food truck with pizza. Although right. they're probably a food no. truck with pizza. But in addition there to. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Yeah. So, uh, of course, the the ever popular turkey legs. Uh, this year, we actually have two vendors ah. with turkey legs. Yes. Smart. So Smart. Two lines. that hungry. I know two lines, right? Uh, you want to try, you know, one of each, go for it too. So we have two different uh, uh, vendors that are doing that. We've got pizza, of course. Uh, we did have quite a few people ask about gluten-free things and vegetarian. We Some of the vendors are, are going to be catering also as well to those needs. Uh, we've got Maddie's ice cream. We've got um, Sexy Mexi. We love them. Who, who knew? Who knew there were burrito bowls back in the, medi in the, the medieval <laughs> times, right? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Everybody's got to eat. Everybody's got to uh, eat. So we've got, uh, what else? Oh, kettle corn, of course. Crim's Concessions. They are our longtime uh, kettle corn people, uh, awesome people, and we love them. We, we try as much as possible to, to work with our local folks because we, we love our local. And we were um, just mentioning Winchester Brew Works will be there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Winchester Brew Works, Misty Mountain Mead, Winchester nice. Sign Works. Nice. Oh, yeah, all all good, all good stuff. Uh, authentic. That's freedom. the one thing too. I think a lot of people associate with Renaissance fairs in medieval times is the big stein of beer, whereas yeah. they're you know talking and partying and chatting and doing all. There's always a stein of beer in their hands. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Or or. Uh, Mead, well, mead, you wouldn't do a stein of mead, that's, that's for sure. True. Otherwise, we'd be carrying you, carrying you <laughs> out of there. Uh, but also, I, I do want to make sure people realize it's there's not just alcoholic drinks there. There are, there will be plenty of non-alcoholic uh, for adults, children, uh, water as well. Uh, actually, Sexy Mexi is going to be having hibiscus lemonade, which is Ooh. very good if you Ooh. enjoy that. Uh, so there will be anything and everything from, you know, zero to a, to a hundred, <laughs> <laughs> all the different, uh, different types of foods that people would like. So let's talk about music because it's going to happen throughout the event, but then you yes. have it also as actual performances scheduled throughout the three days. 
Correct. Correct. So Friday, we're going to kick it off again like we did last year. We we found it. It worked well. Uh, we're going to have a, a concert, a Friday night concert from 7 to 10. Uh, kicking it off with Josh Oster, which is um, he does kind of Celtic uh, acoustic type music. Then we are going to have belly dancers. Uh-huh. Wow. It will be uh, after Josh. And then we're going to wrap up the evening with a Viking metal band called <laughs> Operation Botched. Wow. Yeah, yeah nice. it's going to be quite the treat. <laughs> but so if what you energy. if you, you wow. want something a little bit, you know, easier, then come on Saturday and Sunday. And then we've got uh, Kadu, which is an awesome uh, Celtic band uh, playing this year. Uh, Sean Healy, again, another awesome, well-known, uh, he he plays all around the world, actually, uh, super, super talented gentleman, uh, and I heard he's bringing uh, a uh, Celtic dancer who is going to be doing some step Fine. dancing on stage with him. Ah. I know, oh, actually, we also have the Celtic uh, dancers that, are, that will be coming again this year. Nice. Yeah, awesome. lots of good stuff. And then, of course, Justin and I were asking you during the break if there, Justin was asking you if there would be jousting because he's a guy. So he wanted to know about <laughs> jousting. And you completely blew his mind. You said, oh, yes, jousting is back. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So this year, we were excited to have uh, what's called Burhurt uh, Fighting, which is full armor combat. Halberds, full contact, axes. right? It's full, oh. full contact, full armor. Like they're in it to win it. <laughs> they are in it to win it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a sight to see. Um, it's 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 quite the experience. Um, they, we have four different uh, people, uh, different groups actually that are coming to do that, um, all the way from Massachusetts. Uh, to New Jersey, and then uh, two Virginia uh, groups, uh, Iron Lions and Tidewater Dogs, uh, two groups that uh, are going to be there as well from Virginia, and it's it's going to be quite quite the show. That's awesome. Now, is, which days are those are those on? Are those so that's Saturday and Sunday? Okay. Same thing with the jousting Saturday and Sunday as well. Um, and actually, we have a, a young lady uh, who is uh, called the Ravenwood Rider. And she's going to be doing some some tricks on horses as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I heard there's going to be some a possible either pumpkin or watermelon that might lose its head. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> okay, so I need tickets for all three days. I need to just come at 3 o'clock on Friday and stay straight through till 5 o'clock on Sunday. Do you have deals on tickets? Can I buy a three-day ticket? Do I do I have to sure buy one have. each day? How do tickets work? You sure can. So we have a one-day pass, of course. Uh, 16 and up, is it's $25 for that. Um, we do recommend doing the three-day. Uh, it, it's, it's a great deal. It's $40 for adults. Uh, thirty dollars for for children, uh, six and under are free. Uh, it, it, because there's just so My much. Still so free. Woohoo! All right, I got one. I got there one. Go. Still free. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So so it, it's um. Th there's so much, and, and then you can kind of go back and forth. You know, once you do get your three day ticket. Uh, we'll give you a, a wristband and then you come back, you know, whenever you want, because there's just so much to see and do. I like the option of the three-day ticket because, and I do this for, and sorry, Justin, I'm going out of your area here. I do this for Luckett's Fair that they have over in Clark County because I never really know when I'm going to be available. So they have a special VIP on Friday. They do their thing on Saturday and Sunday. I just go ahead and buy the three-day because if I make it there on Friday, I can still go back again on Sunday. It's just nice to know I already have a ticket for whenever I want to go over the weekend or go multiple times. So a three-day right. ticket is my jam. I am all about a three-day ticket. Yeah, and it's yeah. less than two days. It's less than buying two days. Yeah, right. So what the? There you go. Yeah. And there where you can go. I get them? Do I buy them online? Do I have to get them at the gate? How does that work? 
both, whatever, whichever works better for you. Um, you know, we try to get people to purchase them online. Then this way you don't have to wait, you know, uh, uh, online. Yeah. On the website, uh, so that you don't have to wait online the day of, uh, it can get, um, you know, backed up a little bit. Uh, but, uh, either way we, we will also have them at the gate. If you don't want to wait in line, get them online. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Um, and what was the website again? Oh, it's a uh, Ravenwood Fair with an E, F A I R E, dot US. Okay, and that has the whole schedule on it and all the performers and all that stuff. I, I just uploaded the schedule, you know, good old technology. <laughs> it's a little challenging. We put it out on, on social media and uh, I finally got it up on the website. And pretty awesome. soon we're going to put up the map as well so you can kind of navigate and, and see where everything is. Uh, so you can kind of plan out your day. We are also going to be making uh, QR codes. Uh, so if you don't have the you know map handy, you can kind of scan nice. a QR code. Yeah, give you oh, an nice. idea of scheduling and maps as well. Well, the, we... the map, maybe the map is a good segue into the other part we were going to talk about. Am I am I jumping ahead of you, Janet? No, that was exactly what I, I was going to use the map as a segue, but I was going to say, and we were talking before we started recording. <laughs> You Perfect. really would like to find a permanent long-term home for this, not just for this festival, but you got all kinds of year-round foundation. programming you'd like to do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So for the foundation, you know, the, the foundation is is what what I started at first. And then the fair kind of, you know, took shape and then they kind of, you know, work with each other. Uh, so the goal is to help children, um, you know, children that aren't, uh, possibly into sports or, you know, um, activities like that. We want to try to focus on out more outdoor activities, uh, archery, uh, you know, horse, horse riding as well. Um, just sticking to, um, I know it sounds repetitive, but outdoors, (laughs) not that you can't do other things, but you know, uh, so having a, a permanent spot, uh, so, of course, not only being able to do the fair, uh, and, and what we our goal is to do that for several weekends, because it is a ton of work for a three-day, you know, yeah. fair. Right. So, to be able to have it, uh, you know, for multiple weekends, so, you know, more people can attend and, and enjoy the, the festivities and the, the educational aspects of it as well. Uh, but then to be able to have schools, even, uh, have field trips come to the property during the school year. Uh, we actually this year had several schools, uh, one of which we were able to schedule uh, an educational day and we went to their school and we were dressed and talked about, you know, um, logos and and heraldry and how that was reflected back then, you know, if a, if a, a, somebody had a, a, a Um, a lion on their shield then you knew that was their you know their heraldry that was their group who they were where they were from the colors like everything you know represented that and how do we do that today you know so we we talked about logos and and showed them all the different logos and all the kids they knew oh walmart oh (laughs) nike oh apple you know i mean so we're all, we're doing that nowadays as we did back then, you know, so kind of tying in, you know, education. That's, uh, that's what I'm all about educating. So, and so what are that you year round, you know, so, so what are you looking for? What's the foundation looking for with, with the property? What's the, what's the search look like? What do you, what are we, what are you trying to do? So, so the ideal, the ideal property is uh, we'll say 30 plus acres uh, give or take. And and the reason why we kind of hit that number is I, I've done my research with all the different fairs around, you know, what you need uh, set up, the actual fair itself with parking as well. And then, uh, of course, you know, with the, the thought of doing things year round, places where buses can park, you know, school buses. Uh, we'd like to have areas, uh, you know, for, for that. Uh, wooded partially wooded actually would kind of be ideal uh being able to have that experience of kind of 
you know, walking through a forest, uh, you know, being able to go to all the different vendors and activities and things like that. It adds to the feel of, you know, going going back in time. Okay. Um, and now are you, now is your foundation a, a, a nonprofit organization? So Ravenwood Foundation is a 501c3. Yes, okay. sir. I don't know if anybody feels like donating 30 acres. <laughs> it's a big, that's a big tax write-off. Hey, but. Right. Well, and right? it doesn't even have to always just be a full out donation. I mean, if they were going to sell it for $300,000 and they sell it to you instead for 150,000, they still get to take that other 150 and count it as a write-off. So discounts work as well for tax write-offs. If you can't really afford to just give something away you outright. Just give it away. Okay. There right, you right, go. Right. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a, a winery, a brewery, even, you know, places that maybe have uh, extra land that would want to partner up or or help, you know, it, anything like that. Uh, I, I'm open. Uh, I'm open to all ideas. And, and you know, if, if other people have the same goals, then please reach out. <laughs> well, I, I would imagine there's a lot of people listening that, that have kids or grandkids that they they know that they need to get outdoors more and they know that they need, and you know, maybe they, they're not big into sports or maybe they, they just sit behind the computer all day or their phone and they're like, you know, you guys get a, got to get out in the woods, but you can't just drop them off in the woods. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that parental advice. To, you can't just drop them off in the woods. So, right. but you know, I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of demand. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. And I think, I, I think there'd be a lot of support for, you know, for this sort of a thing. And I, I would love to have my kids more involved out in the woods. We try to go out as much as we can, but if there's programming that gets them out and, and interacting with, you know, archery, I, my kids love archery, absolutely love it. They love horses. They love all that sort of stuff. So I, it, you know, that sort of programming I think is, is fantastic. I think it's a great idea. And I think there's a lot of demand for it. So hopefully we really want to help you find a home. So um, Thank you. I really want this Thank to happen. You. And your yeah, contact information, Jill, is on your website at ravenwoodfairfair.us. So they can reach out to you and say, hey, I heard on the radio you're looking for a space. And they can you can start that conversation with you there. Absolutely. Yeah, I am open to to all ideas, you know, any anything. But whoever out there is uh, wanting to, to, to chat it up contact me and we'll, we'll discuss, figure it out. Awesome. There's a solution yeah. somewhere. You just have to find it. Yes. Absolutely. And we have Absolutely. got a lot of land in our area. So <laughs> somebody, really somewhere, somebody somewhere <laughs> is going to be an awesome partner. I mean, um, ideally Frederick County, right? That's, that's really, I'm, I'm trying to stay in the, in the local area. I, I live in Frederick County. I love this area. Um, you know, being able to, to find something, you know, for the, the county children, especially, but doesn't mean I would I would uh, turn away any Winchester City or Clark County or <laughs> everywhere, you know anyone that that is looking for that experience, you know, would, would love it. Fantastic. Awesome. So tell me one more time: dates, time, and location. September thirtieth to October second, Frederick County Fairgrounds, two fifty Fairground Road, which is uh, Route eleven in Clearbrook. Uh, Friday, we're open at three. Closing at 10, Saturday, open at 10 a.m., closing at 7 p.m., and Sunday, opening at 10, closing at 5 p.m. And where can they get tickets online? Oh, uh, at uh, Ravenwood Fair, that's F A I R E dot U S. Fantastic. And also at the gate if they if they and, choose. Yeah. And if the they gate. want to wait to the last minute or they suddenly or they're listening to the podcast and it's the day of oh. because they oh. didn't listen <laughs> on the air. I get a right? lot of I, I sometimes get some grief from my podcast listeners that uh, don't think I give them enough notice when I host people on the show for an event that maybe is happening the same weekend that it's on the radio because not everybody on the podcast listens the same day that it airs on the radio. And no, they may listen great. the following week and they're like, you did this podcast and the event had already happened by the time I listened. And my argument well, was I should have listened sooner. <laughs> there you go. Well, as of today, we're eight days out. So they've got right. time. So when you <laughs> hear this. Time. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin, it has exploded from farmer's markets to harvest festivals to all kinds of stuff. All of that stuff is on your website as well, right? 
end of September all the way through October through the beginning of November, everything is bonkers. There's way more than we have time to talk about. So anything and everything you can imagine. If, if like I was saying earlier, if you can't find something to do, you don't want to do anything. Um, <laughs> there's, there's so much going on. So we have such an incredible community. There's so many from the tiniest little things to the, the biggest events we've got everything going on, lots and lots of family-friendly, family-focused events. The majority of them are that. So yeah, check out visitwinchesterva.com and uh, just click on the events tab. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for taking some time this morning to chat with me. I do appreciate it. Awesome. Thank Thank you. you. And as I mentioned during the break, if you want to watch us have this conversation, since we did such a good job on the video end, I'm going to post this on YouTube. So I will put the link up on our Facebook page. Jill's got uh, yeah. the crown on, so you got to watch. This. You got to see go. how the full effect of what <laughs> it is, and now I got to go get a crown because I'm thinking <laughs> I'm I'm not huge on the whole. I don't do Halloween, and people are shocked that Halloween isn't my favorite holiday it's because orange. orange is my favorite color. But I'm just not in. But I feel like I could walk around an event <laughs> like Ravenwood Fair with a tiara or a crown and the beautiful velvet dresses. I feel like that might be my jam. <laughs> I think everybody needs to come just to see that. I right. will. I will show up just for that and there we go there's another fundraiser opportunity for you (laughs) I, i will be back tomorrow it is top of virginia regional chambers turn at the mic so meet me back here for that conversation just a few minutes after noon